Well, today I've got this old school big back TV. It's a 27 inch Philips CRT set and the problem it was brought in for was no sound. And uh, doing my preliminary checkout, I've determined that the tuner is totally dead in the unit. So I'm gonna look at that. And the uh, first thing I noticed here is, um, it's kind of tough to see and I don't know if the camera is gonna focus in on it or not right away, but uh, right here there is a little crack in the circuit board. And so I'll show you the bottom of that and uh, talk about addressing, uh, there's a couple ways you could repair a crack in a circuit board. So uh, let's take a look at the bottom of the board. Okay, one thing uh, very important on these uh, older CRT cathode ray tube TVs, uh, some sets do have residual high voltage in the picture tube. And so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my uh, clip lead and uh, you'll find a ground strap on most of these. So I'm gonna attach the clip lead to the ground strap. The other end of the clip lead I'm going to attach to a screwdriver with an insulated handle and I'm going to stick it under the second anode cap and there's a snap as you can hear and that's discharging the voltage. The picture tube is a large capacitor so it's discharging the voltage that is stored in the picture tube. Well here is the bottom of the circuit board and as you can see right here there is a crack and the circuit board is flexible right there. And so it looks like it's just these first three traces and a large ground trace that was damaged. Uh, I don't see any damage over here to the other side. And so there are a couple ways that you can address repairing this uh, defect in the circuit board. One of the things that you can do is you can follow the circuit traces all the way up through here. They run around and eventually they come back over here it looks like to these two jumpers that supply data to the tuner I think it's clock and data is these two jumpers right here so you could physically attach a wire to the end of this and then just visually inspect find out where the other end of this goes and attach a jumper wire to the opposite end of this uh, it's a little more time consuming to visually inspect and find out where things go, especially if you've got a circuit board that has a lot of traces. And of course, with this old big back TV, this customer does not want to put much <laughs> money into it. So uh, I'm just going to run a couple jumpers across the bridge itself. Um, I think what happened on this, he mentioned that uh, it took an impact on the back. So let me move this uh, back away a little bit farther. And uh, you can see the tuner is mounted right where the crack is and I think it pushed on the back of the tuner and that's how it damaged the board. Well I'm going to start by scraping the uh, coating off of the circuit board here to expose the copper trace underneath just using a small screwdriver so I'm just going to uh, bear a, about a quarter inch on each side pretty easy to do um, I've got a Dremel with a wire brush. That works quite effectively too. But uh, I just wanted to show you real quickly how to repair a, a very minor break like this. Make sure you get it down to where the uh, copper is bright and shiny, not dull. That looks pretty good there. Next I'm just going to take and tin with solder the traces. I also want to make sure they take solder really good on both sides. So the next thing I'm going to do is I've taken just a piece of hookup wire. This is very thin hookup wire. Uh, let me see. It's 26 gauge. Uh, you could get some that's even thinner than this. And uh, now that I've got it thin, I'm just going to tack each end of it down. Just make sure it takes solder on both sides. And I'm just going to take a razor blade and score it. Rock it back and forth a couple times. And it'll come right off the board. Then I'm going to do the same thing to the next two traces. And it does become tough to uh, make sure there's no uh, heat interaction between the first, second, and third traces. But uh, with just a little bit of patience, uh, all three of those traces can be... Uh, jumper. I've seen people I've seen people use um, just solder to bridge that gap 
and uh, that does work but it, it definitely is not a long-term solution uh, for the fact that if you just use solder across the gap and you don't actually put a wire across it that um, the solder will eventually fatigue I'm going to start that one over. The solder will eventually fatigue and uh, the, the gap cracks again but having an actual piece of wire across there um, adds a little bit of resiliency so what I didn't do on this piece is I didn't pre-tin it and uh, that's one thing you need to do is just take some solder and pre-tin the lead with solder so that it takes very nicely on the other end There we go, so there's two of them done. There's the third one tacked in place. I'll just take the razor blade and slice it completely off here. There we go. Now I need to run a jumper across this ground. Uh, that's pretty easy to do. You can do the same technique of just uh, burying, the, burying the copper here in a couple places. I like to make just a little pad here. Do the same thing on this side. So I've got two little pads there, so I'm going to take my soldering iron, I'm going to just tin those up really quick. That looks good. Take my razor blade and slice through this. There we go. Now we should be all set on this one, so we'll go ahead and flip it on over and give it a try. All right, so there's the set after uh, the hard wiring, as we call it here. We like to hard wire the circuit boards with actual leads. Um, now this this will work on single-sided and double-sided circuit boards quite easily. Of course, with a double-sided board, it involves potentially twice as much work as on a single-sided board. But um, if you were to have a multi-layer board where some of these circuit boards have three, four, five, six layers in between the top and the bottom, if you were to have a crack on that board, uh, there is no repairing that one easily. It would be much easier to just try to find a suitable replacement circuit board in that case. Uh, anyhow, I just want to bring this to your attention that uh, small cracks can be easily repaired on a lot of these uh, TVs, uh, especially if you had a, uh, a power supply board or something like that that was mishandled. And as always, thanks for watching. Let's uh, try to keep these sets out of the uh, recycle box or bin as it may be, or the trash heap, the landfill. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your views and comments. And as always, I try to get back to as many as I possibly can, but I can't answer every single one, unfortunately. Thanks for watching. Remember, uh, you can follow me on Twitter, NorCal715. Have a great day, and take it easy. So shame